Theater, Four Star Playhouse presents Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, David Niven, Ida Lupino, Dick Powell in The Girl on the Bridge. Thank you, sir. Perfectly all right. You may keep them if you'd like. I have a lighter. Thank you very much. You said uh, no ice, sir. That's right, yes. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> I suppose that did look a little ridiculous. Ridiculous? Not a bit. Intriguing, perhaps, is more like it. A toast to page 136. Most provocative. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? My name's Andrew Ward. The artist? I've admired your work for some time, sir. My name is Tennant, William Tennant. Oh, yes, of course. I heard you lecture last year in Chicago. That's the extra sensory perception, wasn't it? Very absorbing. Are you a believer, sir, or a skeptic? I'm very much a believer. <laughs> well, of course I am. But then it's my life's work. In fact, I've dropped everything else at the university. Must be a very interesting subject, Professor. Yes, it is. But you'd be surprised, Mr. Ward. How many people still do not accept extrasensory perception as a fact? They pick up a telephone to call someone a thousand miles away, and at the precise moment they do, the telephone rings, and it's that person calling them. <laughs> you know what they put it down to? Luck. Coincidence. They say, how can one person er, uh, tune in, as it were, on another? <laughs> Something amuses you, Mr. Ward? Oh, I'm sorry. I think interest would be a better word. How about another drink, Professor? Well, uh, uh, Stuart. Yes, sir? Would you bring another drink for the Professor, please? Very good, sir. Have you ever seen this before? Charming girl, bridge, juicy apple. <laughs> yes. I must have seen that painting dozens of times. I painted it four years ago. And that's what you were toasting. Well, I don't blame you. That's a most attractive young lady. Well, that isn't the real reason I raise my glass. I drink to this picture whenever I see it for many reasons. One is it opened my eyes to the very real existence of your specialty. Thought transference? Yes, sir. It proved to me beyond any doubt that uh, thought transference is not only possible, but that it really happens. How familiar are you with the West Coast? Been there many times. Know the High Sierras? Oh, yes. Well, that's where it all started, on a clear blue day four summers ago. I was on a bit of a vacation in the mountains, and I was strolling through the woods one morning with my sketch pad when I came upon a sight so completely unexpected and so utterly charming that it practically took my breath away. I saw a girl sitting on a bridge. I stopped and just stared at her. She was the most enchantingly attractive girl I'd ever seen. And as I looked at her, I felt the strangest sensation. She was a complete stranger to me, and yet I knew her. Somehow, I knew her well. She was so engrossed with her thoughts, she didn't even notice me, and almost without thinking, I started to sketch her. And then, after a while, she slowly turned her head, and our eyes met. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How long have you been there? Oh, two weeks, two days, two minutes. Please, you're moving. Now, stay just as you were. I want to get it all down and outline. But then what do you do? You take it home and fill it in? Mm-hmm. I'll put the lavender in your dress, the green in your eyes, and if I can ever get the red in your hair, I'll put that in, too. Then I hope I'll have something to look at and feel good about until I'm a very old man. Please. I know I'm imposing, but it will make such a nice picture. Just back as you were and don't move. But my back is well, tired. It won't be long. You must be from that artist colony across the valley. No, I have a cottage right there at the end of the lake. Oh, then you're the one that plays those lovely records at night. Some nights. I've wondered who it was. I've listened to them so many times. Last night you played Brahms. It's quite beautiful. Thank you. Head back. 
Two nights ago, I sat there for almost two hours. You were playing a whole program of French songs, remember? I remember. You see, I have exactly the same records, and, and the strange thing was that those were the particular ones I wanted to hear that evening. It was almost as if you knew I was there and, and were playing them just for me. Oh, sorry. I haven't seen you around here before. Where do you... Uh... Oh, I come here often. It's so beautiful and quiet. You should have seen the moon on the lake last night. It was incredible. I did see it. I walked up to the top of the hill around 10 o'clock. You did? Well, I was there, too. We, we must just have missed each other. The air was so fresh and clean. It was so... so exciting. I, I wrote a song. Is that what you do, write songs? No, not seriously. Of course not. Only last night, I just couldn't help it. Have you written it down? No, that wouldn't be any fun. Well, I write dozens of them, and then I, I just toss them away. I do the same thing with houses and clothes. Look, are you nearly finished? My back is killing me. It won't be long now. Am I easy to do? No one's easy. I wish I had a face of character, like Colette. Deep lines of living. <laughs> Give it time. My face is a bore. Nothing. Empty and shallow. You're beautiful. Beautiful? You're the loveliest thing I've ever seen. This picture of you right now, I hope it'll stay in my eyes forever. What a very nice thing to say. I mean it with all my heart. Oh, there you are. I hope you realize I've been up and down this whole countryside trying to find you. Victor, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were looking for me. I hope I'm not interrupting, but we must be leaving, you know? Are you finished? Oh, believe me, I'm desolate to be of a disservice to art, but art is long and time, our time at least, very fleeting. Victor, please. A thousand apologies. Come. I'm sorry. I'll never forget this. Goodbye. Goodbye. Charming. Charming, dear boy. A very pretty girl on a bridge. Well, go on. You haven't dragged me away from a highly important conference with a new advertising client to show that to me. What do you want me to do, buy it? I want you to help me find the girl. What do you mean, find the girl you painted her? You must know her. Now, Bob, don't go all Madison Avenue on me. I'm not one of your vice presidents. I tell you, I just saw the girl for a half an hour. Since then, I've looked, searched, asked, no good. Don't even know her name. Hey, you're in love, aren't you? Oh. Yes, I really think you are. For the moment. Forever. Look, Bob, that's my girl. I'm not going to explain it. I can't even try, but I'm just telling you, that's my girl. I want to find her. Well, how do I come in? All I think about the only way I'm going to find her is if she sees the picture and calls me. Now, how do I get the biggest coverage for it? Well, let the Raynaud Galleries take it. They've always done very well with your paintings. That's only one window on 57th Street. I want to blanket the nation with it. I want to make a poster out of it or a calendar. Be part of the advertising of some national company. That way, she'll see it. Now, you've got 20 of the largest accounts in the nation in your office. Now, how do I get started? All right. I think I've got it. Paint me a nice, juicy apple right there, and we're in business. An apple? You're out of your mind. Put in an apple, and we'll have this the best-known painting in America within six months. The apple growers of the Northwest will jump at it. They're looking for something different to be their institutional advertising for the year. And with your name on this, they'll go crazy for it. And if they don't, we'll make them. That's the daffiest idea you've ever spawned. I'm not going to ruin this picture with an apple. Oh, you artist, I thought you were in love. Well, I am, desperately, but... But an apple? Well, throw the whole thing out of balance. Balance? Balance? What's that got to do with it? You want to find the girl, don't you? Well, this will do it. Oh, but an apple? Well, do what you want. i got to get back to the office. You realize I charge a fortune for my expert advice outside my office. However, my poor love sick boob, I'll make you a present of this inspiration on one condition. When we do find the girl, I'm to be best man. So long. Not for the advice you gave me.
Bessie. Hey, Bessie. You want something, Mr. Ward? Yeah. Bring me an apple. Well, as much as I hated it, I took Bob's advice and painted the apple on the picture. Sent it to the advertising agency, and a few weeks, the uh, campaign really started to roll. But just where does the thought transference figure in all this? Patience, Professor, I'm coming to that. Oh, I'm sorry. Go on, please. Well, the apple growers of the Northwest did exactly what Bob said they would do. They went for it in a big way. And in a very few weeks, the whole country was blanketed with a picture. You couldn't pick up a magazine, any magazine, without seeing my painting. It caught your eye from half the blank walls in the nation. You couldn't drive down a country lane without having it hit you in the face. But one afternoon, when I was rushing to keep an appointment, it didn't much more than hit me in the face. Stop. Please stop. Don't go any further. I felt a little foolish sitting by a stoplight that said go, but not for long. Whew. This was my lucky day. About a month after that happened, I was packing for a trip. Quite a big deal. I'd been commissioned to paint the portrait of Governor Lewis on the West Coast. You'll be gone a week, Mr. Ward? More or less. Uh, I'll let you know. Hey, I'm going to be late. Would you call downstairs and get me a cab? All right, Mr. Ward. Don't go. Please don't make this trip. It's so important that you stay home. What's the matter, Mr. Ward? Bessie, did you hear anything? No, did you? Oh, I think I did. It was me, Sally. Well, the cab's downstairs at the door. Don't let it go. Let it go? But you'll miss your plane. Never mind, I'm not going. You mean you're not going to paint the governor? No, I've changed my mind. Wish I knew what got into you. Yes? You are Mr. Ward, who painted the apple picture? Yes, I painted it. I'm the mother of the girl in that picture. Oh, I see. Well, this is wonderful. Come in. So nice meeting you. This is a great occasion. Have you seen the original picture? There it is. So you're the mother. Yes, I can see the resemblance in the eyes. Tell me, how is she? She's going to get married. Married? When? Within a week. To whom? To Monsieur Victor Bukov. Bukov? The man with the bald head? Yes. He's my daughter's ballet teacher. For five years, she has dominated her life. Work, work, every hour, every day. He wants to make her a pavlova. So onward, this book of his driving her. By now, she's sure he's running her life, telling her what to do, when to do it. Finally, she said yes. She wants to marry him. Come, sit down. Does your daughter want to be a great dancer? I don't know. I'm so worried, Mr. Ward. Because underneath all his charm, this Bukov has no real tenderness or understanding. He's a cruel man. Why did you come to me? Because I love my daughter, and I want her happy. When she came back from the coast last summer, she told me of you. The man with the lovely music. That's what she called you. Your meeting was more than an incident to her. It had real meaning for her. You impressed my daughter, Mr. Ward. You impressed her very much. Has she ever seen the painting? Yes. We talked of it many times. I told her to write to you, telephone. I said you cannot find her, you do not know her name. But she was shy. No, she said. Maybe he has forgotten me. Forgotten? I thought of nothing else. Where is she? What's her name? Her name is Lisa, Mr. Ward. Lisa Karina. 
She has a little apartment six blocks from here. Six blocks? And here I was thinking it may be a thousand miles. When may I see her? Tomorrow, Mr. Wolf. You can come to tea tomorrow at my place. I will have her there. Perfect. Here. Here is my address. I hope I've done the right thing. I only want my daughter's happiness. Don't worry. You've done the right thing. Goodbye, Mr. Wolf. Till tomorrow. Till tomorrow. Mother, you shouldn't have done this without asking me. Now, Lisa, Lisa, a man is coming to tea. That's all. But you made him come. You trapped him. He has to come. He wants to come. Well, I'm leaving. I'm sorry, Mother, but... Good afternoon, Mr. Worth. Hello, Mrs. Karina. I think you know my daughter, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. I'm so happy you could come by, Mr. Worth. Thank you, Mrs. Karina. I picked these up in the corner. I thought maybe Thank you... Thank you, Mr. Ward. It's very kind of you. Why, Violets? Why, they're her favorite flowers. Mother, please. Now, come along, both of you. Sit down. We'll have a little tea. Been writing any more songs, Lisa? Oh, you remember. Oh, yes. The houses, the dresses. I remember. Sugar, Mr. Ward? No, thank you. Just as it is. I have uh, two tickets for the concert this evening, Lisa. How thoughtful of you. Lisa just loves concerts. Mother. Don't you, dear? Mr. Ward, I'm afraid that tonight I... But why? You have only dinner with Wukov. I'd like very much for you to come. It's Brahms. Well, I... It starts early. We can have a bit of supper afterwards. You know, I haven't seen you in a long time. We have a lot to talk about. But, Mr. Ward, I can't... Please. All right. I'd love to go with you. And I will send a message to Monsieur Bukov. To your mother. Lisa, Lisa. I don't know what I've been calling you all these past few months. Darling, I guess. Just darling, but Lisa's good. That's right. Wouldn't want it anything else. Lisa and Andrew. Nice? Very nice. Oh, I've waited a long time for this. And now it's too late. Oh, Andrew, don't you see? I didn't know I'd ever see you again. But when you saw the apple in the painting, didn't you realize I was trying to find you? It was the only way I could think of. I thought you'd just see my name and... But I wasn't sure. How could I be? Just those few minutes, that's all we've ever had together. I know what it meant to me, but... It meant the same to me. Darling, I've loved you since the first and last time I saw you. Loved me? Without even knowing my name or anything about me? I knew all I had to know. I knew that you were gentle, and that you understood moments, that they had to be caught and really lived. Don't say any more, Andrew. Can't you see it's impossible? Impossible? Why? Long ago, I made a promise to myself that I would never let anything come between me and my work. This, uh, promise, you, uh, did you really make it to yourself? What do you mean? Or did you make it to Bukov? No, no, it's, it's not that. Lisa, Lisa, darling, listen to me. Someday you may become a great artist, maybe not, I don't know. But I do know there's something greater between us than your career or mine. It's that something that, that made me hear your voice. Not only in my dreams, but right in my room. I've looked at that painting of you and suddenly you've become real. I haven't had a painting of you, but... Sometimes I felt that you were so close, I could, I could just reach out and there you'd be. And you'd give this up? There isn't any other way. Of course there's another way. Now we're going to friend Bukov, and we're going to tell him, one, that your marriage to him is off because you're going to marry me. And two, that your career won't be ruined because I'm a reasonable man, and if you care to, you can continue your studies after our marriage. It's impossible. We'll talk again tomorrow over a short lunch. No, no, we must never see each other again. Oh, just a short lunch. One course only in a public place. There's no harm in that. All right. But just one course. 
A thin cup of soup, nothing more. Oh, my darling Lisa, how very much I love you. Good night, Mrs. Andrew Ward. It's been a lovely evening. I always remember it. Oh, Andrew, Andrew, you make things so very difficult. But it has been a lovely evening, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Good night. Till lunch tomorrow. Good night. Good evening. Victor. Mrs. Andrew Ward. <laughs> oh, yes, I've been watching you all evening. Your mother's a very poor liar, my dear, so I easily found out where you had gone. And I watched you and your, uh, <laughs> your admirer. Concert, dinner at Michelle's, very charming. Quite touching. Also a little childish, I think. Victor, I've got to tell you something. No, I must tell you something, Lisa. You don't have time for this nonsense, this puppy love. There are only two things in your world. Your work and me. I think you will not see this young man again. Please, it's, it's very late. Can't we talk it over tomorrow? No, we'll talk about it here and now. Andrew, Andrew, come back. I need you. Quick, come back. I need you so. Lisa. Oh, please, it's late. I can't see you. Can't see me? Well, someone's mixed up. You sent for me. You did ask me to come back, didn't you, Lisa? I, I wanted you back. I... Yes, I did call for you in my thoughts. Well, I heard you. Here I am. Lisa, come away. Ah, Mr. Bukov. What kind of insanity is this? Well, good evening, good evening. I had planned a little interview with the three of us. Not so soon, perhaps, but this will do very nicely. No, it will not do very nicely. Lisa is tired. And you and I, my friend, have nothing to discuss. Nothing whatever. Lisa, my dear, go to your room. Victor, I must tell you something. Andrew and I are going to be married. Good girl. Oh, you must be crazy. You think I will let you throw yourself away? To give up the great career I have planned for you? No, there's not going to be any great career. I'm going to tell you something I've never told a living soul. I've even tried to keep it from myself, but I can't. I don't like dancing. I don't like it at all. It, it bores me. Oh, th th this is blasphemy. You're not yourself. Oh, you're wrong, Bukov. She's being herself for the first time in her life. Will you keep out of this? Lisa, get rid of this man at once. I order it. Oh, come on. Nobody runs around talking like that anymore. How oh, dare you speak to me in that fashion? Well, if you're going to act like a third-rate Sven Galli, it's the only way I can speak to you. Oh, will you get out of here? <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, Lisa. Not a very dignified exit, old boy, but it's the best I can do. Good night, dear. Now we can have more than one course for lunch tomorrow. Right. And remember, if you want to send me any more messages, go right ahead. I'm on your wavelength. Good night, dear. Good night. So there you are, Professor. That's the story of the painting. Bukov got himself another pupil, and that's the last I ever saw of him. And that's uh, why I toast the picture. If I may, Mr. Ward, I'd like to join you in that toast. I'd like to drink to the girl on the bridge. Did you call me, dear? Oh. Professor, she heard every word we said. Positive proof that your theory works. Darling, may I present Professor William Tennant? How do you do, Mrs. Ward? How do you do, Professor? How very nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, too. I wonder if you'd both do me the honor of being my guest for dinner. We'd be delighted. To May we have more than one course? <laughs> yes, Mr. Ward. You may shoot the works. 